Previously on Higurashi When They Cry Console Arcs Mission. こちら一課次長、ミナイ。先日の事件現場に到着しましたので、これより現場検証に向かいます。どうぞ。柿内 PS よりミナイ次長へ。了解した。鑑識の捜査は終了しているが、可能な限り現状維持を保つように。必要なら、藤田刑事が誰かを手伝いに向かわせるが。どうぞ。そうですね。現時点では必要なし。1時間ほどで車に戻りますので、例の件について進展があれば、その時に。どうぞ。了解した。どうぞごゆっくり。通信、終わります。This incident feels like... That's right. Like some sort of religious ceremony, perhaps? Or a ritual to cleanse impurities. It was a gruesome possibility, just as in the name of blood offering implied. <coughs> Suddenly, the strange talismans I saw by the front door came to mind. If this was a ceremony, then were they all human sacrifices? I shook my head and looked upward to escape my terrible thoughts. And where I turned to look, I saw a shrine seated on a shelf that seemed to be looking down at me. これはええー、そうですね。祀られているのは、お社様ですな。Sensing my intention, Ushi san looked me in the eyes and nodded. 近所の人の証言だと、何でも、祖父のカズマは、熱心な信奉者だったとか。悪さをした近所の子供たちに注意するときにも必ずその名前が出ていたようですお社様のバチが当たるか This incident began last month in Hinamazawa In the end of June 1983 near Shishiboni City Hinamazawa Village Volcanic gas suddenly erupted in the middle of the night and enveloped the entire village As a result of that unprecedented disaster, the entire village was wiped out. An emergency declaration was issued before the cause was fully understood, so all personnel had been strictly prohibited from entering Hinamazawa village, turning it into an isolated island of unreachable land. The shocking news quickly spread across all of Japan, and people began wildly speculating. Within a day, The tragedy had made it to the mass media. Nowadays, the news is more like an entertainment product with heavily sensationalized content that seems far from the truth. And as time goes on, I wonder if the nature of this tragedy will be lost entirely. The people following the incident for their own amusement will quickly find another subject to pursue on a whim and gradually forget about it. That's the way of this world. Nevertheless, there are so many unknown elements of this unprecedented disaster, and Orishiro-sama's curse is the backbone of it all. Upon hearing the Kimiyoshi family name, I was instantly reminded of Natsumi Kimiyoshi's face. An innocent, looking, an innocent looking girl that I ran into on a rainy day a few days ago. Could she and her family be getting involved in another tragedy? How long will this chain of misfortune go on? Slowly looking back toward the source of the sound, in the shadow of the shrine, an enormous spider was gently staring down at me. Jesus Christ, how big does that thing have to be to make it sound like that? <laughs> As if to laugh at me standing there. The spire disappeared back into its nest where its threads were stretched all around, filling the house with its disturbing sound. Something in the palm of my hand released a cold feeling that pulled me back to reality. When I looked down on that something, I gently closed my eyes and searched my memories to remember what it was. Sato no my pace wa, e t o k o r o m a r u k e d o sa. そのせいで相手の気持ちに鈍感なのは全然良くない
あんたは意識してないかもしれないけど自分以外のものを比較対象にして自分の幸せをアピールするやり方聞く相手によっては笑えない時もあるよ別に私は自分と夏美を比較したりなんかしてる実際に夏美がそれすごく気にしてるあの子をよく見てみればうんで結論から聞きましょう何が言いたいわけ私はそこらのなんちゃってメイドより夏美のエンジェルモート姿が見たい猛烈に見たいのだ最近習った漢文帳で言えば我夏美のアデ姿を見るを欲す That is a Chinese proverb? どうだこれで伝わったか You sure that's just not a human proverb in general? Because, um, Chisado, people like seeing naked people. It's just a fact of life. なんならドイツ語でもロシア語でもサンスクリット語でも私はこの思いを翻訳してみせるぞ山科さん何でもいいからこのアホを黙らせて睡眠薬持ってないバカに効く薬はない<笑>あっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっあっ I noticed the name Hinamazawa Village on the bottom of the screen. Kuri Kaishimas. Honjits me me, Shishibonesi Hinamizawa Chikude, Daikibona Gassai Naiga Hase. Shisha, Yukwe Fumesha got Tasu de Tail Moyodes. Genzai no Tokoro, Sezon Shawa Mitskat Teorimasen. No survivors have been found. We all absent mindedly stopped to listen to the newscaster's report. The entire village was destroyed overnight. Huh. It's a tragic accident for sure, but I never heard of Hinamizawa Village. That's why I don't have any strong feelings about the incident. However. Natsumi! What's going on? 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 ごめん、用事思い出しちゃった。私、帰るね。確かに、ちょっと変だったよね。何かあったのかなそりゃ、元いた町の近くで大災害が起こったんだから、心配になったんじゃないか ?Thank you for pointing out the obvious. え ?Here in Momoru's answer from behind us, Tamako and I turned at once to face him. After hearing that, Tamako gasped with a look of horror on her face. And I'm sure I had the same expression. 大学卒業して就職したらなかなか忙しくて会いに行けなくなるでしょだったら4年間くらいはあの子の近くにいられたらってね千里 It sounded ridiculous It was totally selfish Wanting to see that girl every day sounded like nothing but trouble Even so I もうなんか暗い話になるから言いたくなかったんだってば恨むよタマコあんたは相変わらずだね
いつになったらその場所から前に進み出せるの I couldn't understand what I just heard. At least for now, I understood that I was doing this for that girl's sake, not just my own. Mushiro, I t h i n s t a o i t d y a t r a k o n o d e k a i n i m o t o o r o s k o t o g a t e k i r n o k a t e n e s o n a n o k a n t a n j a n a a n t a g a t i b u n k a r a s e o n o y a m e r e b a i d a k e t i g a s o r e g a t e k i n a i k r a <laughs> and so it continues. Greetings, my name is New Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of the Higurashi When They Cry console arcs. So, we're only one episode into this new arc so far, two now as of this one, but I'm still kind of curious as to how exactly events are going to end up playing out because. As was established in the last episode, this is the answer arc to the previous arc that we were just on. And while I'm still pretty confident that、uh, most of the an so called answers that we're going to get in this thing are stuff we already know from the main story, and it's just going to end up only vaguely alluding to a lot of things without giving any hard answers on anything, I'm still more curious to know how the personal stories of Natsumi and the other characters are going to play out. Because that to me is my main focus here. I'm hoping that it works out good for everybody, but I know that it's not going to be an easy road to get there. Plus, I'm, I guess, plus,、uh, wait. No, I didn't know there wasn't anything else. That was it, really. So let's get started. Saturday. June 25th, 1983. The bookshelves were narrowly lined up inside the records room of the Metropolitan Public Safety Division. Countless files and bundles of documents were stored here. There were public security incident reports and related material from as far back as the end of World War II and up until today. Yet, despite the sheer amount of effort spent maintaining these records, Their context is extremely rarely made public. Most are destined to stay buried away and remain secret for all eternity. Not because the cases go unsolved, or because the truth is never found. If anything, the investigations that have happened here have exposed a large number of trends, structures, or fraudulent records of big shot politicians, high level bureaucrats, and political organizations. However, no, because of that, countless investigations are suspended without being made public. Because the subjects listed here often involve people who have a lot of influence in the political and economic world. So it is par for the course when it comes to this stuff. It's, not, it's, not, it's all about the connections you have. So, of course, many of those people band together to try to find common ground because they have that authority and occasionally commit fraud. So, what would happen if these documents were inadvertently revealed to the general public? Probably not as much as you think. Or I think, rather. I mean, sure, there's gonna be, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of people that are upset, but. If whatever is being done isn't strongly negatively affecting a lot, of pe a lot of the general public's lives right there, then and there in the moment, like it's getting, like we're talking about like people are starving levels of bad or, some, or some, something equivalent to that, there's not going to be too many people who would, pro who would、uh, be flooding the streets protesting. And I say that, and I say this. Speaking from my own personal observations over this kind of thing the world over, it's usually, usually people don't spring into action until the, the only alternative is, well, a lot worse than if they didn't do anything. To put it succinctly, maybe people would grow less trusting to politics and the government would lose its authority. You'd be surprised how trusting people are of governments that blatantly and repeatedly abuse their trust. 
If that happened, it would have a devastating effect on the population. Not as much as you think. And the federal system would be crippled beyond control. And there would be e even be a risk that the chaos could lead to total collapse. Politics, economics, diplomacy. It's no exaggeration to say that the so-called dark history of this country is stored in this room. As a result, not even police officers are allowed to freely enter and leave this room. A strict ID card and password check is required for entry. My toe carelessly bumped into the side of a protruding bookcase. The gaps between the shelves have space wide enough for two people to stand side by side. I made my way through the passage and reached a small quiet door at the end. There stood yet another security check. I undid the lock and opened the door leading to the seventh re reference room. And inside the room, off in one of the corners, stood a desk separated by shoulder-high patricians. My office. A lone detective watching TV near the window noticed my entrance, stood up, and saluted. It's been one year since I was promoted to police superintendent. I'm finally getting used to the title of Commissar. Commissioner, excuse me. Where did I get Commissar? Saying the Soviet Union. ええ、関さんと川島さんは昨日国会議事堂での とにかく体を動かしておきたいんだって言ってました。あ、コーヒー入れますか？あ、頼むよ。Detective Nimi filled a paper cup with the coffee machine by his desk and said, "Here you go," as he sat it on my desk. Sitting in my chair and taking a big gulp, I bitterly thought back on the incident Detective Nimi just mentioned. We the police should have been overjoyed not to have any criminals that needed catching or crimes that needed trying. However, that case in particular was halted by an order from the top brass. In other words, some political influence made him decide to abandon the case before completion. I'm sure some political pressure was involved in the decision. Evidently, some corrupt people were involved on the inside. Nevertheless, taking into consideration the social pressures and disadvantages, the case was shelved. It's not like this was the first time for me or anything, and I could understand the necessity to compromise in the interest of national order. Still, it's a fact that the more pride we have in maintaining justice, the harder it is to accept these unreasonable circumstances. <laughs> 今日から休みだって言ってませんでしたかいや、休みは取り消した。休暇中に行こうと予定していた場所が。立ち入り禁止。ああ。Detective Nimi quickly realized what I meant and turned his attention to the TV screen. He'd been watching some variety show with flashy announcers. Three days had passed since the sun volcanic gas disaster struck Inamazawa village. Though we have yet to receive a follow-up report from the self-defense forces carrying out res rescue activities, the state of the villagers is looking increasingly grim. <coughs> the newscaster divulged the details of this macabre, macabre, this macabre reality. When I first heard the news early in the morning on June 22nd, everyone, myself included, felt too stunned to say anything. But now that three days had passed, I was able to watch a bit more calmly. Still, this was an unprecedented catastrophe, unlike anything since the end of the war. 
Every TV station reported progress in real time, organizing special information releases every night. Countless people on screen were shouting, weeping, roaring, grieving. These are probably the residents of the next town over, Okinomiya. Actually, the landscape behind them looked quite familiar. ひどい話ですね。ポンペイか、浅間山の映画を見せられているようです。南沢村だけで、およそ2000人が暮らしていたはずだ。それが全員絶望なんだ。もはや、親方も上に下に大混乱です。閣僚の非常対策本部は、救
それでうん、うん、ちょっとね Kano-san's eyes wandered as he tried to find the right words. Then he sat down and lit a cigarette. Following his example, I took his seat and turned toward him, waiting for him to speak. Hmm. The silence continued for a while longer. How strange. I guess it's difficult to talk about. Then, just as after I began to feel doubt, Kano san crushed the butt of his cigarette in the ashtray and began to speak. Mother, Koko da Kano Hanasini Stemorita in Daga. Kessa, Okono Kambo Chokan the Taureta Soda. I thought I had mentally prepared myself, but I suddenly lost my breath. The news he provided was just too shocking and unexpected. Biojoa. すぐに病院に運び込まれたが現在絶対安静とのことだ夕方には病状が発表される予定で数日以内の辞任はほぼ確実らしい突然ですね I couldn't think of anything else to say I sighed and looked up to the ceiling The fluorescent lamp was flashing erratically nearing the end of its life Secretary, o、uh, Secretary Okuno was a leading authority in the largest ruling party. In fact, if you look through the faces of the current cabinet me members, this child was currently assigned an important post. He had a powerful voice and a tremendous influence on the cabinet. Also, he's been busy non stop in the wake of the recent disaster, managing the incident response from headquarters and fielding press conferences. Could that have been the cause of this? Koning wa dare deska? Yahari Kogai no Nashimoto Fukchokan deska ne? Yeah, Chikai to Koroni Kita Hanashato Nashimoto Shimo Dojini Jinin Surashi Koning wa Imano Tokoro Otani Fukchokan no Shoka de Chose Stere Soda. Eh? Otani Fukchokan deska? That was another surprising bit of information. Nashimoto was Secretary o Okuno's right hand man, and his experience and accomplishments were more than worthy of the title of Cabinet Secretary. Chief Cabinet Security Ukuno and, for, and, for, and former Foreign Minister Imamura had drastically different policies. Even though they were members of the same party, they fought like cats and dogs. There was strong speculation that Secretary Ukuno used his deep ties to the Prime Minister to have Imamura dismissed as Foreign Minister. And a feud extend to the lawmakers working under them. So I don't think it would be easy for Secretary Ukuno to choose a political rival as a successor, even in an emergency. So, then, Chiba Kosei Daijin won't be able to do it. So, Tashka Kareva, Okuno Chokan to a Meiyu Kanke ni Atta has this. Take Tai no Habats ni Watas Kurai Nara. Jibun no Habats no Dareka ni, so no post to Yokyu Stem Okashi Kunai to Moi Maska. Tashka ni. それでも、党内では指したる反対もなく、すんなりと人事が進んでいるらしい。だからこそ余計に、異様さが目立っているんだがね。おうしかし、それ以上に変なのは奥の長官だ。入院したのはいいが、病名が不明でね。You don't know what for, huh? Interesting. また、過労で絶対安静、という割には、派閥の議員たちが秘密裏に病院を往来しているえそれは It was definitely suspicious If these were just routine hospital visits there would be no need to keep them secret In these succession talks with party members 
Maybe this illness is just a farce to prevent the information from leaking to the media. Kano-san pensively looked down while lighting a second cigarette. As told, the story of Secretary Okuno's sudden illness felt extremely hard to swallow. ただ、at last, I was beginning to grasp the situation. In other words, Kano-san needed my team to monitor the, o the Ukuno slash Chiba and Imamura party leads. わかりました。早速私の部下たちも招集します。あとは、そう早がてんしないでくれ。それなら私じゃなく片岡市長が全体に命令を下しているはずじゃないか。After saying that, Kao-san pulled a document from his breast pocket and spread it out in front of him. It contained a list of names for about 20 companies and organizations, with something written next to them. This is... <laughs> 前回の総選挙で得た政治献金の団体リストだ。ワビエスさん。そこの下の方を見覚えないか。I diligently scanned the list and opened my eyes wide when I saw a specific name. The name Sonozaki. It was the name of one of the three families governing Hinamazawa village, who led the villagers in the anti-dam protest campaign. The conversation had suddenly shifted in a strange and unexpected direction. It was on the TV just a moment ago, the great Hinamizawa disaster. Volcanic gas burst from Onikafuchi swamp and into the village late in the night. The death toll was over 2,000 villagers. Even three days after the incident, the Hinamizawa area remained completely blockaded. Rumors and misinformation spread across the country, and people were stricken with a terrible fear of the unknown. The cause of the gas release still remains a total mystery. Since there were no warning signs, finding the cause has proven extremely difficult. <coughs> Five years ago, I was investigating the kidnapping of the Minister of Construction's grandson. I spent some time in Hinamazawa village as part of that investigation. And while I was there, I met a strange girl named Rika Furudi. Akasaka, Tokyo e kaere. Back then, she made that mysterious prophecy to me with an innocent smile on her face. Every subsequent year, a murder will occur in Hinamizawa on the night of the festival, and my wife will die in an accident. It was all so unfortunate and frighteningly. All her predictions eventually came true. Rika Furudi. I'll never forget her. I wonder if the great disaster claimed her life as well. Sono Saigaisa. 
、一晩で村が全滅してしまったという、あれのこと。カノセンズ voice pulled me back to reality, and then he revealed to me some more astonishing information. 実は、あの事件、政府は事前に災害を予測していたんじゃないかっていう噂が出ているんだよ。日時まで特定できるほど、詳細に。<laughs> well, I don't know who your sources are, but I would say they're not wrong. This was indeed predicted. There was indeed a time and date set for it. Predicted? The disaster. So, that's the disaster. Now, the disaster is. 原理は知らない。私は地質学者じゃないからね。ただ、それにしては救援活動の初出が早すぎる。しかもレスキュー隊のリーダー格の中には、上長の命令でその日の年給を直前になって取り消された者も,もいるらしいんだ。な。One of whom was a specialized engineer. And despite the unprecedented nature of the situation, many seasoned veterans were able to deal with the incident. Could that be evidence that this wasn't an unexpected disaster? Like fire or earthquake? But something that was anticipated? Correct! しかしですもし事前に分かっていたとすればミスミス村人全員を見殺しにしたということになりますおお、it's worse than that. I would argue that they, they, might, they, they basically murdered the villagers themselves. 数にして2000人ですよ Kanosan calmly stood up, then opened the door to crack a peek outside. Even though we were in a locked room, There was always a chance that noise could leak out. Fortunately, he was able to verify that nobody was in the hallway, so he continued speaking in a hushed tone. Kimi no you told me, so they got home to that tra, die scandal. Tambo chokan no jinin toka, naikak no sigilis toka nante hanashijanaku, kokka no yatai bone ga hikri kaeru kamo shirenai. Dakara, oku no chokan no new in to jinji doa, so it's no shin so. 永遠に闇に葬るための最終手段だったんじゃないかという疑いがあるんだしかしなぜそんなことがわからないだがタイミングが良すぎるのがどうも引っかかっているんだよ未曾有の災害が起き予知が可能だったと噂が出たのはその数日後そしてその翌日には官房長官が入院つまりあの災害はいわゆる人災で、だからこそ余地ができた。憶測の息を出ないが、そう考えても不自然はないだろう。状況から判断すると、野党側の追及を避けるために奥の長官が事件の幕引きを図った可能性は、否定できなくもない。なるほど。In other words, could there be a political conflict behind all this? Once again? Correct. A secret that, if exposed, could ruin the political careers of many party leaders. If that was the source of all this, it would be a huge scandal. The gravity of the matter had me sweating profusely across my entire body. So then, what does he need? None of you. Kimi are Izum. Hinamiza, you eat Takoto, that time, eh? Over to the guy. Eh? Much on this. 政府の災害予知に関する情報は他に当たらせている。君には、ひなみざわ絡みの情報を集めてもらいたいんだ。Had ひなみざわ ever experienced a gas leak like this in the past? Were there any other incidents or accidents that seemed related to the gas disaster? And was there something behind this gas disaster or not? Just learning that much didn't seem like an unreasonable goal. 
Unfortunately, Hinamazawa is now a restricted area, and all the residents have passed away. Even if I asked around, I had little hope of uncovering any new information. Ah, oh, what? No backup for me? Uh, I don't get to have my own personal Watson to scribble down notes for me? Kano-san glanced at me with a bitter expression. If it's anything like the case our group was hit with the other day, it could lead to large-scale allegations. It was an unusual story. There was certainly a strong political influence, so I could understand why the higher-ups ordered the investigation to be suspended. However, despite, the, despite given the wealth of evidence we collected and the high probability of success, the higher-ups never provided an explanation for why they made that order. Thanks to, all, thanks to that all-too-perfect timing, Kano-san and I had very little doubt. It was entirely possible that someone on the inside was leaking investigation data. この前の件もあって、私のところは古い部下でさえどこで誰と繋がっているかわからない現状だ。君のところは。いえ。お恥ずかしいことですか。だろうね。そんなわけだから赤坂君に頼みたいんだ。ちょうど下級に関わっている山
Rika Ferruti certainly did give me that warning. And then, I found out the following day that my wife had died. I was overwhelmed with regret, just as she predicted. Even now, it's a memory that haunts me. But what was even more frightening was that it would continue to happen every year. I was still worried about her prophecies even after returning to Tokyo, so when I had free time I would spend it looking into Hinamazawa. My wife's death wasn't the only one she predicted five years ago. In 1979, the dam construction foreman would become the victim of the dismemberment murder. The following year, June 1980, two victims would fall to their deaths. And the following year, June 1981, the priests of the Ferruti family would die and his wife would go missing. Then in June 1982, another person was beaten to death. And then, in June the following year, Rika Ferruti would die. All of her predictions came true. Last June, my spine was completely frozen over as I looked over the accuracy rate. In June 1983, is this year, of course. I still haven't confirmed the death of Rika Ferruti. However, an unprecedented gas disaster struck the village just days ago, and the prospects look grim. I don't understand why her predictions came true, but after hearing her prophecies five years ago, I began to grow deeply concerned for Hida Mizawa. And so, it seems like fate, fate that I should be involved with Hida Mizawa again. Back then, was Rika Furuti asking me to change the future? After all, I was astonished to learn that it happened every year, but I had no choice but to sit idly by. And as a result, did I allow the gas disaster to occur and claim Rika Furuti's life? Thinking of it that way, the feelings of guilt came rushing back to me. Detective Nimi's voice brought me back to my senses, and I picked up the receiver. And as I pushed the 8 button, the person waiting for me on the other end was... Jesus Christ, it's a zombie! I'm just kidding. Clearly I was wrong. I guess, I guess in this timeline, he's alive. Wait, 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 wait. Last episode... Yeah, yeah, we, of course he was. I mean, it's not like last episode's events occurred, like, a few years ago or something, right? I feel like an idiot, because I can't quite remember. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> Hearing that voice for the first time in five years brought back memories. <laughs> I felt a sense of relief as I heard that booming laughter on the other side of the receiver and quickly moved to the receiver away from my ear. So this, so this. なはははは。覚えていてくださってこうですよ。覚えてるも何も。ご無事でしたか。いやあ、良かった。テレビで見て。ずっと心配していたんですよ。そうでしたか。いやいや、心配をさせてしまってすみませんでしたね。いえ、大石さんならきっとご無事だと信じていましたから。いや、more faith than I did。それより急にどうしたんです？何かご用でも？いやね。実は私今東京に来てるんですよ。どうです、赤坂さん。今日ちょっとだけお時間ありますか？
I'll say the word again. It's fate. Eh, Daijo, this. What does much of all? Oh, is Sunny go so dan staikoto ga at tan desio. Sorry, I got da. Ja, Uchakuma do Kagai must be. Another person related to the Hinamazawa to the Himiza to the Hinamazawa is drowned is drawn to me. I think you forgot to put disaster in there. Just guessing. It feels like it's my destiny to uncover the truth of Hinamazawa. This place looks familiar. ちょっともう変わりありませんな。いやいや。私なんてまだまだですよ。大石さんこそお元気そうで。何よりです。ふん。少し顔つきがたくましくなりましたかね。それにお世辞がうまくなった。Well, I know karate can definitely help with getting stronger, but flattery, I will have to look into it. そんな。<laughs> it's been a while since I last saw Ushi San, but he hasn't changed a bit. I'm glad. This was our first meeting in five years, so we had a lot to talk about. So we talked for a while, and shared our stories of glory and bravery. But we wouldn't go on like that forever. So once Wushi-san's iced coffee ran out, he called a nearby waitress. Then he ordered two more glasses. After the waitress dropped them off and walked away, I took the opportunity to cut in. After saying that, Ushisen slid me a pile of documents. It was a list of victims from the Great Hinamazawa disaster. As I received the list, I lowered my head to the set. My, I lowered my head. Ushisen stayed silent out of concern and just shook his head. He, pro he probably knew a lot of the people who passed away. That thought brought an ache to my chest. <laughs> I stared down at the list, ready to devour it. Carefully looking through it, I let out an exasperated sigh once I found the name I was looking for. ん赤坂さん、誰かご存知の方でもあ、いや。これはもう確定の情報ですかええ。沖縄に派遣された救護隊員から内々に渡してもらったものですから。I reviewed the list a second time and stared at the line where the name Rika Furudi was listed. Since the moment I heard about the catastrophe, I was prepared for this. Nevertheless, in the depths of my heart, I still believed in miracles, and that only made my grief even worse. こんな大惨事が昭和のこんな時代になって起ころうとは。いたま。ええ、全く。ですが、赤坂さん、それより今回の雛見沢大災害には。Hearing Ushi-san say that, I recalled what Kano-san said and I discussed earlier. Actually,実は、あの事件、政府は事前に災害を予測していたんじゃないかっていう噂が出ているんだよ。日時まで特定できるほど、詳細。Could Ushisan know something about that? I don't think so. Maybe he had some important clues related to Kano-san's theory. I quickly learned for leaned forward and my palms grew sweaty, 
as I wait for him to continue his story. However, the explanation Ushisen raised sounded laughable. Just as I was waiting enthusiastically, I felt like I was being splashed with cold water. After all that, a supernatural term like curse came up. なんですかそれは。初めて聞きましたが。なあ。赤坂さんはご存知ないかもしれませんがね。ひなみざ村では毎年たたりが起こっているんですよ。親城様のたたりが毎年6月に渡永氏の日にね。まさかそんなこと。
And just as the prophecy five years ago predicted, someone killed her? I leaned forward. There was no doubt in my mind that I wanted to hear the truth. In consideration for my closeness to Rika Furuti, Uchi san carefully chose his words to avoid inciting me, then continued. Just then, the picture slipped out from Ushi San's file. It was a picture of what remained of Rika Furuti. Ushisen rushed to grab the picture in a panic, but the miserable image of Rika Furuti was already firmly burned into my mind. Her cloudy eyes all were open, staring vacantly above, and her, and her abdomen was sliced open wide. It was so cruel, it pained me just to breathe. Even though she predicted her own death, the fact that it actually happened was haunting. Did she know how cruel her death would be? Was there nothing that could be done? Did she have to be swallowed by fate? The hell is going on? Kyoraku <laughs> しかしですね、赤坂さん。私はこれは単なる猟奇殺人じゃないと睨んでいます。ちなみに南沢の綿流しのお祭りのことはご存知で。6月の村祭りですよね。布団の綿を川に流すってことくらいなら。I vaguely remember the story and was answered as such. Then 南沢村のお祭りの綿流しってのはそもそも綿流しつまり増物流しから転じたものらしいんです何でも一食いように立ちが犠牲者をばらして内臓を川に捨てたという昔話から転じたらしいんですよつまり南沢村においては内臓を引
木南沢村の救命は鬼ヶ淵村っていうんですあれは村名の由来ともなる象徴的な沼なんですよこの沼の奥底は地獄につながっていて人食い鬼たちはこの沼から訪れたなんて話が村人たちの間ではまことしやかに言い伝えられていますするとお社様の逆鱗に触れて沼から鬼がやってきたその通りに有毒ガスが発生して村が滅んだでもそれはいくらなんでもできすぎてやいませんかこんなところで驚いてちゃまだまだですよさらに続きがあるんですから村の伝承ではお社様がお怒りになられると地獄の釜が開いて正気が溢れ出す地獄につながる鬼ヶ淵沼から正気つまりガスですよそれも予言のうちだと I felt totally lost The gas disaster was predicted by the village traditions Could that be the real meaning behind Kano-san's government prediction theory? Could the death of Rika Furuti be in the impetus of the gas disaster? Could such a device exist at the bottom of the swamp? Possible. No. Maybe there was something to this. Could the villagers have kept such a device in the swamp in order to unite the village and maintain faith in Oishiro-sama? But if such a large scale device was being set up, the villagers would have grown suspicious the moment it was installed. It's ridiculous that I'm taking such foolish theories seriously. But at this point, it's impossible to decide that there's no connection between the gas disaster and the villagers' belief in the curse. In reality, the villagers believed in the curse and they referred to the murder incidents that occurred every year as the curse. Then, was the, great, was the gas disaster caused by humans who believed in Orishir Sama, who were angered by the murder of Rika Furudi? Maybe it wasn't a natural disaster, but a target to release a poisonous gas. That also sounded weird. If the intent was to annihilate the villagers, I couldn't understand why they would express it in a way that resembled Rishiro Sama's wrath. If you destroy all the believers living there, who is left to feel threatened by the curse? I desperately try to organize the thoughts in my head. Still, the one thing I could conclude from all this was that the probability that someone could have predicted the gas disaster. Was greater than zero. 大石さんは綿流しの日に毎年起こっていた日南沢村での連続開始事件の方はどう捉えていますか連続事件は存在しないというのが県警の公式見解です事件に連続性はなく綿流しの日に毎年事件が起こるというのも偶然に過ぎず個別そして今回の災害も偶発的なものだったとつまり誰もそこから一歩も踏み出そうとしないわけです私が東京に来た理由少しはお分かりいただけましたでしょうかですから在職中にどうしてもお社様のたたりを解明したい悲願なんですよ。The ice in Ushisan's iced coffee had completely melted down. He turned toward a waiter behind him and held up the empty glass. Ushi san continued investigating the case all on his own, never wavering in his belief that the crime had a human culprit acting under their faith in Rishir san. 
I think I learned what it really means to be a detective by looking up to elders like him. And this is my case, too. I've been thinking about Hina Mizawa ever since I lost my wife five years ago. Now that the villagers, uh, village is no more, it's time to unravel the mystery behind these prophecies. And Rika-chan. If the tragedy has unfolded just as she predicted, then there must have been some dark conspiracy behind it. I want to find the truth. No, I have to. Oishi-san. わかりました。一緒に調べましょう。親城様のことを。ちょうど私も<笑> All the incidents up until now are treated as part of Oishiro-sama's curse, including the recent disaster. And my orders from Kano-sen were to investigate leads related to the disaster. Therefore, this curse is absolutely worth investigating. Oishiro-sama's <laughs> <laughs> Ushisan stood up with the receipt in hand. And so, our lengthy investigation began. Wednesday, June 29th, 1983. I'm assuming we're now seeing this from uh, Minai's perspective. Yep. <laughs> ただいま、電波の届かない場所でパトロール中です。ご用の方は発信音の後に要件を50文字以内でお話しください。気が向いたら後で返信します。なんつって。Monica and Minai responded in a teasing tone and raised the volume on the car stereo, acting as though she didn't hear anything. Of course, the receiver was still turned off, so the person on the other end didn't hear anything. Famous for her non-exemplary work ethic, Monica was not interested in speaking to her superiors back at the transportation division. It had been an hour since returning from a troll in Hokue City, and now is the fifth call now. Even though it was easy to avoid responding the first time, I couldn't. that couldn't go on forever. <sighs> While sighing, Maka took off her police hat and tossed it in the passenger seat. Since the signal at the intersection ahead was red, she pulled her small patrol car up to the edge of the road and came to a stop. And then, she tilted the rear view, view mirror and began to straighten out her messy hair. Uh Monica realized that tomorrow was payday, and she would be able to visit and to pay a visit to the hair salon. While thinking that, she pulled a notebook from her breast pocket and opened it to find the rewards card held inside. Couldn't you just trim off the ends? With like a pair of scissors or something? Save you some money. If she paid one if she paid one more visit, she'd receive a free shampoo. She was planning to hold off until she could get a free hand cream, but she did just run out at home and it would be convenient. Shampoo ka. Thinking about shampoo brought back sour memories. 
Her recent fight with her began because of shampoo. Saturday, last month. While they were on the night shift together, Monica thought to take a shower, but noticed she was out of shampoo, so she went to borrow some from the First Division. The First Division just has shampoo handy? Fascinating. Shampoo was inexpensive, so of course she would be willing to share. Ah, uh, from your sister. And Monica didn't want to waste anyone's time on a trivial conversation. So she quietly borrowed it without asking. <laughs> Actually, the truth is, you don't really need to uh, sh wash, your, wash your hair out every single day. Because your hair, your hair, uh, produ your hair uh, produces and collects oils that are actually essential to, for uh, essential for to stay looking healthy and thick and stuff like that. Unless you're the sort of person that just naturally produces a shit ton of hair oils, then in which case, well, your case may be different. But depending on how oily your hair tends to get, you could probably actually get away with uh, not shampooing it for like a day or two. And would it actually be better for your for your hair's health in the, in the long term doing it that way? It all depends. But if you absolutely must wash your hair, then you can do you can do so with just regular body soap, whether it be a bar of soap, body wash, you name it. Because shampoos and conditioners tend to be produced with a shit ton of chemicals that are actually bad for your health, your hair hair health. So. If you're gonna wash up, just use re regular body soap. Be a lot less harmful. Sorry, I just went into trivia mode. Ignore me. Monica thought she was making a light joke and acted like borrowing something wasn't a big deal. But she was clearly in a mad mood, so she responded to Monica's sarcastic remark with a scathing retort. In the end, the two of them stormed off in anger, and haven't spoken to each other since. Monica was certainly the cause of the problem. But adults should be able to talk through their problems. Actually, she was always like this. She acts calm and intelligent, but in reality she can be very emotional, and hates when her interests and values are pushed outside her, her comfort zone. That's why she still couldn't accept the man Monica chose to marry. Ultimately, she declared, if the two of you get together, I'll disown you as a sister. <laughs> Harsh. Maka attempted to persuade her on 19 separate occasions, but she got shot down every time. Though the relationship wasn't as broken as it was before, so at least progress was being made. <laughs> As she was thinking that, she noticed the light turning green. Monica sat down in her notebook, fixed the rearview mirror, and stepped on the accelerator. As she crossed the intersection, she noticed a sports car approaching from behind in the next lane over. And then it quickly overtook Monica's patrol car, traveling just barely the speed limit. Mm, she stopped to think for a second. When she glanced over, it looked like the driver wasn't wearing a seatbelt. PURSUE! Though it wasn't a legal violation at the moment, wouldn't it be an officer's duty to stop the car and give him a warning? Ma, Ika. Maka lifted her foot from the accelerator and let the car gradually lose speed. The patrol car could catch up over a long enough distance but a pursuit would cause trouble. Plus, 
The way the car was driving was clearly intended to provoke police vehicles. If patrol car got tangled up with someone like that, the odds were even higher that it would lead to trouble. Note to self, if you want to avoid uh, trouble with the police, act daring and bold around them. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Actually, a couple of days ago, one of her colleagues engaged a driver who committed a parking violation. But the driver screamed at the officer, who eventually came back crying. Fire him! Replace him with someone with bigger balls. Then send the bigger ball officer after, after the offender. That'll teach him. Female police officers are an especially enticing target for thugs and dissidents. Oh, it was a lady. Hmm. Give him a taser. No matter how much society p pursued social justice, there was always a powerful opposition. Maka shrugged her shoulders with a bitter smile on her face. Not to mention, she received a reprimand last month for pursuing a suspect across prefectural borders. It was a really unfortunate incident. They were actively pursuing the culprit, but they had already identified both the model and plate number of the vehicle, so they should have relayed the information to the neighboring police and Sawaguchi Station and left it to them. The perpetrator was just a single offender petty th thief. It was a sudden and insignificant crime, so it shouldn't have been a big deal, but it ended up becoming one. Nevertheless, the boundary crossing complicated the disposition of the incident. It ended up adding an unnecessary blemish to a promising career. Even though she was the one who stumbled in her duties, would anyone complain? A sigh suddenly burst out. Even if Maka told her it was a waste of talent and effort, she would just slowly move forward. However, if their positions were reversed, if she was in that position, would she let others handle the crime scenes and other duties? Remember the faces of the great people in the office, and spend every day making the rounds? Despite being a local police officer, Tomoe's excellent results got her adopted as an executive candidate by the main headquarters of the National Police Agency. It put her on the elite course, the so-called recommended group. After all, she was an elite officer who rose above the most difficult portions of the National Police Exam, and that brought in a lot of attention. Plus, she was a woman. Selecting her supported the government gender equality movement. It even got coverage in the newspaper. So taking advantage of all of that, and reaching a rank and position as high as her late father, should pave the way for a long and prosperous future. Too bad that won't help with her dating life all that much. It should. Even so, she thrust her neck into all sorts of crime scenes and worked tirelessly all night, without ever taking days off. <sighs> Maka thought back. Her father was definitely that sort of compassionate person. If he saw a person in trouble, he'd break his bones trying to help even when he wasn't on duty, and he wouldn't care if anyone saw it. Maka certainly respected her father, but all the same, always watching him run off and leave the family behind. Sometimes it hurt. As if the helpless strangers were more important than his own family. It was impossible to avoid seeing it that way. <laughs> Unlike her and her father, Monica was invited to take the recruitment exam and just ended up with a job. She didn't receive any of that special treatment. 
That's why she couldn't emulate their enthusiasm. Looking at it from their point of view didn't change anything. While lost in thought, Maka could hear the voice over the radio repeatedly saying, Please respond. Even so, they probably give up after around a dozen times of this at this time as well. And unsurprisingly, the radio went quiet a few minutes later. <sighs> and then, a sigh came out. Since she didn't respond after the fourth attempt, they would likely send someone else instead. But Maka was sure Chief Komura was trying to send her to go pick her up. Well, she was still in a bad mood from their earlier quarrel, so she'd probably turn down that request even if Chief Yamo Yamaoki asked her to. But, only today she was thankful for that sentiment, even though she also thought it was stupid. <laughs> She scratched at the hair, just and she just strained out of frustration. Maka was feeling particularly tired. Today, not only did she lead the parking violation crackdown this morning, but she also gave a traffic safety class at an elementary school, filling in for a junior officer who couldn't make it due to a sudden illness. And she just got back from that. Speaking to a huge crowd of children, telling them the rules of the road, and explaining why they matter. It can be difficult to get through some of the unruly children with words alone. It took a lot of care and attention to keep conversation funny and interesting so they wouldn't get bored. It was really hard work. Besides, even if you desperately try to reach the, to teach them, there's always at least one person who coasts through the driver's license exam. Like that idiot driver earlier. Holding in the frustration and emptiness and continuing a speech for over three hours, including the rehearsal, would be exhausting for anyone. <laughs> Still, she would harass her the moment she walked by. It would, it would be really difficult to make, up, to make up with her after their fight in this totally exhausted state. I'm sure you could do it. I got faith in you. Be the bigger woman! She would be in a bad mood the moment she opened her mouth, and it would be difficult to get an apology out. She'd do her best to keep the sarcasm and hate from coming out, but it would still be readily apparent. <laughs> the communication light lit up once again. Sheesh, is it going to be another go pick her up message? Maka predicted so, because it rang five times at the same intervals. And then, she put her hand on the dial, intending to reduce the volume even lower. But, just then... Hello, Ushi. Hearing a familiar voice, Maka turned the dial back to full volume. And then she focused her ears, trying to identify the name of the person calling out to her. No doubt. Maka quickly parked the patrol car on the side of the road and picked up the receiver. Never mind, I thought that was Ushi speaking. Oh wait, it is him. やっと返事してくれましたね、マドカちゃん。ダメですよ。PS 
りまた小村課長からの連絡だと思ったからついいやいやついさっき聞きましたよそれでもまあ所長さんも交通課の人たちも気にしているみたいですしそろそろ仲直りしてあげてもいいんじゃないですかうんうんけどさじゃなくてマカ suddenly raised her voice as she gave a vague answer. Then she switched off the car stereo and took a deep breath to calm herself before picking up the receiver again. Surprised by that answer, she breathed a sigh of relief. She was happy to finally get an explanation after struggling to get a reply up until now. There was a complete lack of laughter in his tone. Still, Maka knew Kura chan since before she even became a police officer. So she could tell when he was being serious. She had a rather lengthy history with Wushi. Maka first met him while, while she was still working at a hostess bar. He was a regular customer. Her first impression was that he was a goofy old man, but it turned out that he was a detective and an acquaintance of her father's, so eventually they got to speaking even when she was off work. Plus, He had apparently taken care of her older sister a few times before. So by now, he became, became a close friend who she could place her trust in. Hello, Akasaka. Maka responded to Ushi while thinking about the identity of the person who interrupted on the radio. The roar of the engine resonated as an airplane flew across the sky at dusk. That was not an engine roar, that was a boom. <sighs> These sound effect choices, though, a lot of them are so odd. She caught a glimpse of an unfamiliar logo on the plane's tail wing. But she did briefly see characters that looked like kanji. So she assumed it must have belonged to that new Chinese airline. She thought the name might have,、uh, might have been First Chinese Air, but she couldn't recall. So, Yeba, Saikin Kokomo, Aja Ikino being a fueta, eh? Tomoe quietly murdered and muttered that and thought while watching the wings fly off into the twi twilight sky. When she was young, she always used the Tokyo airport to travel abroad. But now, they decide to make an international airport here in response to the internationalization trend that came through Osaka and Fukuoka. In Fukuoka, excuse me. So the Chiba region became a major travel hub with many planes departing and arriving there. They hit their capacity limit, but supposedly there were talks in Congress to relocate to a new international airport. Still, it was an indispensable gateway for the distribution of people and goods at the moment, and the terminal building off in the distance was bustling with a large crowd of tourists and businessmen. Her 
reason was simply because she enjoyed traveling by airplane. She later set her sights on becoming a florist, then an athlete. Police officer and detective were jobs near the bottom of her list of future dreams. So now I'm going to be a detective and a detective. Tomoe imagined the face of her late father as she gazed down the runway. Tomoe's father, Yusuke Minai. He was strict and quiet, but at the same time, he was gentle and had a strong sense of justice. And he was the sort of policeman that Tomoe was proud of. She never spoke to him about his work. But when she spoke with her father's colleagues and superiors, they all had nothing but praise for him. It was no solace, but when she saw the sheer number of people crying at her father's funeral, she understood. And at the same time, it made his departure all the more heartbreaking. Nevertheless, Tomoe didn't even learn that her father was a member of the Metropolitan Police Department. Until she was accepted into the recommendation group by the National Police Agency, working with police officers and investigating national cases in the name of public safety, according to a colleague of her father's, he was secretly investigating a certain incident, and he died at home in a fire the day before the conference where he was supposed to report his findings. When Tomei learned that fact. She was so shocked she couldn't speak for a while. Interesting. Right as he was about to deliver a major report, suddenly a fire strikes, huh? Twelve years ago, a fire burned Tomei's home to the ground, and both her parents were unable to escape. The cause of the fire was suspicious, and was eventually ruled arson. But the culprit was never caught. Her happy days were destroyed in a moment. Her cherished memories were reduced to ashes. Firefighters were able to rescue Tomie and her sister Monica from the second floor, and the two of them only suffered minor burns. However. Maka remained hospitalized for a while afterwards, not due to the effects of the fire, but from the shock of seeing her parents burned corpses firsthand. Sheesh, that must have been real traumatizing. Oh, oh, Kaisa, oh, what the? Tomoe herself also became overwhelmed the moment she saw them. She began vomiting, and her eyesight began to fog over. But Maka was just a junior high school student at the time, and far too mentally fragile to handle such a dark experience. To be fair. I don't think most people would be able to really handle、uh, handle an experience such as seeing your parents as burned corpses. And it took an entire year before her psyche was able to fully recover. So, when the fire burned, she didn't return home immediately. Even after Monica's recovery, she continued to suffer heavy anxiety. Especially when she was around fire. Not only that, she felt she lost around. She felt lost around her classmates, and her good grades at the beginning of the school year gradually dwindled. She also skipped school frequently and hung out with the bad crowd. Tomei couldn't count the number of times they fought over that. Meanwhile, Tomei entered the law department at a national university. And had such excellent results that she received a scholarship. As a result, the differences between the two sisters grew larger, and Monica's feelings of inadequacy 
drove the two farther and farther apart. The relationship became cold as ice. Until they met again a few years ago, they were as distant as strangers. Similar misunderstandings seemed to, to continue. When Monica introduced Tomoe to her fiancé, she was furiously opposed to the marriage, and she hasn't relented in that stance even now. Just last month, they were fighting over shampoo. She couldn't tell that Maka was only joking around, and couldn't just smile and laugh about it. So she resorted to vitriolic remarks. They were able to exchange words like that all the time back when they lived together. <sighs> Breathing a heavy sigh, Tomei dropped her eyes to the file in her hands and opened it. It contained old notebook pages, individually wrapped in poly and po poly poly excuse me polyethylene poly poly storage bags. I don't even think I still don't think I said that right. He, she accidentally found it in the storeroom at her of her house at the scene of the accident. It was the only thing her father left her. She opened the file and looked down. The notes that she discovered that day were deteriorating from two, 12 years of age. It had been transferred to a file for preservation. A memo was scribbled on the last page of the note, surrounded by a big circle. Kaki, uh, Kakiuchi Airport, June, Wednesday. Go. That part was drawn larger than all the other text. Kakiuchi Airport was a bit far from the city center. She had traveled with her family many times, but never to this airport. Yet, her father was definitely visiting this airport several days before the accident. Plus, they had no relatives in this area, so he had no reason to visit here unless it was related to the case. Twelve years later, she still didn't know. Tosa. She wanted to hear the answer. What was he pursuing? What was he trying to find here? Did he find it? She didn't know. She just couldn't understand it. <laughs> you kind of remind me. Uh, you kind of remind me of Takano a little bit, appearance-wise. Tome turned back to the voice from behind. Maka was standing there. Brushing the hair from her face. <laughs> After hearing what she came here for, Tomie carefully turned back. She could hear a, sol a small sigh from Monica behind her. <laughs> Truly, Maka thought it was time to move on. Her sister Tomi had been visiting Kakuchi Airport on every Wednesday in June since she discovered her father's old belongings. Even before she was transferred to Kakuchi, even back in Ibaraki, every time, even when she was a student with limited funds for living and traveling expenses. It was stupid, worrying about other men. She couldn't imagine her older sister ever cheating, 
so it was obviously a misconception. If a guy said something like that, he'd automatically be disqualified as a boyfriend. <laughs> Maka took several more deep breaths, then calmly walked up next to Tomoe. <laughs> But only a heavy silence blew over. Regardless, things wouldn't start until someone said something. Feeling no choice but to break the ice, Maka turned to face her. But at that moment... Surprisingly, Tomie was the first to apologize. つまんないことなのに大人げなかったわ。ひどいこと言って。ごめんなさい。あ、えっと。うん。私も調子に乗って言い過ぎた。ごめんね。Now strange. Feeling slightly confused, Maka examined her sister's face to make sure her complexion was normal. Maybe it was a trick of the setting sun. But it didn't look very lively. She didn't look very lively. あ、怒ってないのお姉ちゃん。えあんなに昨日までこっちのこと完全無視だったのに。どういう変化ずっと無視してたのはそっちじゃない。That couldn't be true, she thought. From the start, Tomoe was. <laughs> At any rate, it would be best to end this argument. It's nothing. Maka understood what that meant. トンさんはなんで12年前この書き打ち空港に来たんだろう。そしてメモになんでそのことだけを残していたんだろう。毎年ここに来て、いろんな資料を見て調べたのに、全然そのことがわからない。ただのメモ書きだったんでしょ。それ
The sorrow and anger being robbed of your dear old house and land was as clear as day. But before and after the airport installation, the main demand of the local residents' citizen movement was a request for subsidies. And many of them didn't use the money to relocate. Instead, they invested it into renovating their existing homes. <laughs> and as time went on, the local occupants continued pushing movements for additional subsidies. That supposedly led to delays in the expansion of the airport. Thanks to that, there was no choice but to begin construction of a new airport, which greatly ham harmed the reputation of this airport, causing many people to lose their jobs. Unintended consequences, yo. Or rather, unforeseen consequences. At least to these people. Seiji she didn't need to hear anything more. A thought came to Monica, and she would noticed something. She knew her sister well enough to realize she would have already investigated the matter. And she understood that discussing it any further was just a waste of time. Thinking about her father's character, Maka was absolutely sure that wasn't the case. That was who he was. He would have admired her determination to keep trying for 12 years to make peace, so he would never speak ill or look down on her. Of course, Tongli probably knew that too, so it was sad and frustrating. <sighs> お姉ちゃん、もう上がりでしょ。遅れわよ。うん、いい。タクシー拾って帰るから。もう勝ったいな。どうせ公用車をプライベートで使うなとか言うんでしょ。それもあるけど、ちょっとね、帰りに寄り
New tips unlocked. New airport construction plan. Well, maybe maybe this will have something that's actually a little interesting. Number one. Necessity of developing a new Chubu International Airport. Chubu International Airport, Kakuchi Airport, is a major gateway to the sky for the Chubu and Tokai regions. It currently services flights to Asia, Europe, and the United States, and it boasts the fifth highest passenger count in Japan. However, the number of flights has increased due to a recent trend of internationalization. In order to cope with that, there are strict capacity limits on all facilities, including the runways. Unfortunately, efforts to produce the surrounding, uh, procure the surrounding land necessary to expand the runway have proven unfruitful, due to the opposition campaign led by the local residents. Moreover, maintenance and development of existing facilities has grown difficult due to a, oh, a year over. Oh, to year-over-year year compensation increases, excuse me. Therefore, the most effective strategy for future industrial development is to build a new large-scale airport in a different area. 2. Elimination of coexistence between military and private facilities. Since the Air Self-Defense Force's ba base is located adjacent to Kakuchi Airport, SDF aircraft often use the same runways for military purposes. However, due to the difference in performance between civilian and military aircraft, coupled with the increased rate of domestic and international flights, several problems have arisen from the elevated complexity of air, of air traffic control operations. Therefore, in order to prevent or reduce the risk of a major accident, separation of equipment should be established as soon as possible. A fundamental solution for this problem, too, is the construction of a new airport. Excerpt of a white paper from the Civil Aviation Bureau. So it's tied to an air. So it's tied to a military base, huh? Why do I have a feeling that that information might be relevant somehow to her father's demise? More mil, more dark military uh, con con conspiracies, I assume. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Maybe, unless this particular little mystery is going to be saved for a later arc. Okay, so. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I didn't find anything that went on in today's episode to be terribly interesting, all things considered. I mean, Akasaka and Ushi's meetup and their, and their general discussions and theories about what's actually going on, a lot of that stuff I've a lot of that stuff has already been covered in both the main story and previous and previous arcs even within this current series too, so it just feels like retreading a lot of the same ground for me, so nothing terribly exciting there. And while I am certainly a bit curious to uh, learn about what happened to uh, Minai's father, I'm not. I don't find it quite as interesting as I do figuring out what's going to happen with, as I do compared to what figuring out what's going to happen with. Uh, Natsumi, her friends, her family, and all those related parties. Those guys are pretty much the one, the, the one group of characters in this whole affair that I find that I'm the most personally invested in, in all due honesty. But who knows, maybe in the case of uh, Detective Minai's father, maybe some more revel revelations will uh, pop up that will end up definitely sparking some more interest and attention from me. And yet, I say that, but thinking about it now, 
I'm pretty sure that whatever went on with uh, Minai's father is probably unrelated to everything that's going on with the Hinamazawa conspiracy. This is all likely just a very, uh, a completely unrelated r related incident. So, honestly, who knows just how interesting or compelling that particular mystery is going to end up actually being in the grand scheme of things. Know what I mean? But even so, I still want to see where all where all these things do end up, or at least Minai, or at least uh, whatever is going to happen with uh, Minai and her her own personal investigation into whatever happened to her father. Akasaka and Uishi, well, not to be not to be rude to them, but I don't really care all that much about their investigation because once again. It's old ground that we've already that we've already uh, re retreaded multiple times by now. Nothing really new whatsoever there. So, with all that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and cut things off here. And I and, and even though I felt this episode was a little was a little bit on the un uneventful and less interesting side compared to previous episodes, I hope you guys enjoyed this and this and today's episode regardless. And if you did and you want to see more content from me, feel free to subscribe to my channel. And I guess I'll see you all next time for the next episode, which I hope will definitely have some more attention-grabbing stuff going on. Anyway, take care, everyone.